This may have taken me six months to build, but it may also be one of my favorite commissions I've ever taken on. So let me show you how I did it. Oh, this one's going to stretch me. This one's going to push and pull me. I can feel it. I can see it. I can sense it. But in a good way. In the kind of way that one needs to be pushed and prodded from time to time. These have been resting in stickers for a few days. Let's talk about why. So letting your wood sticker and rest for a few days is not always necessary, but it is generally good practice, especially when you're removing a not insignificant amount of material, say more than a quarter inch or more than 25% of the thickness of the material originally. So in this case, these boards were damn near an inch and a quarter thick. I'm going to take them down to seven eighths. They already had a little bit of twist and or cup in them. And so by rough milling them to around an inch, so I'm about an eighth of an inch heavy, it allows them to move and warp and twist in any mild way that they're going to want to after I remove that initial material. And then after a couple of days, I can come in and final mill them down to thickness and they should remain flat. Now again, this isn't necessary 100% of the time. If you're taking a piece that is at 7 eighths thick down to 3 quarters of an inch, I'm probably not going to go through the rough milling process because I have a lot of this material and because it had a little bit of wonkiness to it, I let it rest for about 4 days, just a long weekend, and now it's time to take it down to final thickness.
And, well, it's finally time to do some joinery. So everything looks clean and crispy and beautiful on these dovetails and on the chest so far. But in regards to the design, let's have a conversation about that real quick. So when originally designing this box, my thought was I'm gonna do what I normally do, which is to make what I call growing dovetails. Dovetails that are nice and wide at the bottom and get skinnier as you move up toward the top of the box. And what that does is it creates this really nice growing effect. It has a nice upward movement, gives a nice gravitas to the base of the box so it feels visually stable, but it doesn't feel heavy as it rises. The problem with this piece is that these components are book matched. So you have this center line going right down the middle and that wouldn't have lined up with an asymmetrical dovetail. So that tells me that my dovetail pattern needed to be symmetrical. Playfulness, some kind of sing-songy, rhythmic, you know, it's, it's a vibe, it's, it's a feeling more than it is a mathematical layout. And I ended up with this kind of rhythmic pattern, again, just playing with the, the ratios of these different tails and it looked quite nice. And again, I'm not gonna get into it right now because I do in the other video where I talk about the dovetails, but the spacing of the drawer did come into play in where these pins actually fall. So all of that being said, it, it had a vibe to it. It had a feeling of, of movement and playfulness that I really enjoyed. So that's why I went with this pattern. That's why I cut this pattern. And now the pattern's done and everything looks great and it's wonderful and it's perfect. So it's time to move on to other joinery components. All right. I feel like I've been pussyfooting around this internal joinery bit for a while now. So let's very briefly touch on how I'm gonna approach this and then let's actually cut some joinery. So as you can see, I've marked out all of my internal joinery where all of the dados and grooves are gonna go with a pencil. And now what I need to do is actually cut them. I could do this on the Shaper Origin, that is possible. However, these components are just larger than I would be able to fit on the plate. And so it's gonna be a lot easier for me to do this old school analog style. So that's what I'm gonna do. I know I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. This is one of my favorite joinery tools. It's tiny, it's compact, it's easy to use one-handed and I've got this nice flat registration point on the front which I can use with all of my jigs. Now of course I could absolutely do this on the table saw if I needed to, if I didn't have a router. Or you could do it on the router table if you're more comfortable over there. That's totally fine and I will utilize the router table later and I will utilize the router table later on in this project, but for this application, in this moment, it's much easier and faster for me to take the tool to the piece than the piece to the tool. So let's make some cuts.
Holy guacamole. What an adventure this piece has been so far, and it ain't even done. The glue up was absurd, but things are moving along, and I'm happy with where this piece is at currently, both from a time scale perspective and also from a design perspective. The book matches and the dovetails work beautifully together. It's really nice to see them come together and come alive. You can see how much figure is in this piece, and I haven't even put any finish on it yet, so I'm very excited to see what that does. Now, there are a number of ways to make drawers, and normally, I don't dovetail drawers anymore. I find that to be somewhat superfluous, and there are far more efficient ways of making a drawer, which I usually employ, but from a design perspective, I'm having a battle with myself currently because the only time I ever dovetail drawers is when there are exposed dovetails on the exterior of a cabinet or a box. And look, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want to dovetail these drawers. There's three drawers, one and two on the inside. And, and I don't want to do it. I want to get it done. I want this piece to be complete and in the hands of the client. And yet I'm torn because seeing a dovetailed exterior and then opening a drawer to see pinned rabbits, which is my normal go-to for drawer making, oh, it feels dissonant. It doesn't feel right. And I don't know that I can justify the use of pinned rabbits, even though they look good. They look very, very good. They look clean. They look contemporary. But it does feel at odd with dovetails, doesn't it? If I'm honest with you guys, I know already that I'm gonna, because it's the right thing to do for the object, for the piece. So sometimes, sometimes you got to do the thing you don't want to do because you know it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to convince myself of that over the next 15 to 20 minutes while I mill these pieces up. So let's get busy. <laughs> Oh my word. Oh, I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna take a knee on this one. Oh yeah. Well, it's early October. I started this piece in mid-May, so however many months that is. But it's finally ready for a coat of finish. I've got everything dry fit, all of the hardware fit in. 
The drawers are looking and feeling great. The lid details are done. All of the components on the interior are fitted. The only thing that's not been permanently attached yet is the nub for the lid stay because that gets epoxied in after the finish is done. So now that I have everything assembled, time to disassemble and mix up a new batch of finish. I don't know that this thing needs much of an outro. I mean, you've been watching me build it for like six months, so. All I'll say is this was a challenge to build, a delight. There's a great deal of satisfaction in making an object that you know connects so deeply with somebody. But that in and of itself is a challenge, right? That's a difficult thing to do, to accomplish, to pull off meaningfully and not accidentally. And I say that as we close out this video only to remind you that if it's difficult for you, that doesn't mean that you're bad at it. It just means that it's a difficult thing. It's not an easy thing to accomplish, to set out just beyond what you're capable of and then wade out into those waters. That's the whole point of doing what we do. And we just happen to be people who chose the medium of wood. That's the only reason we make furniture or sculpture or things out of dead trees. So if it's difficult, don't be disheartened. Don't think that you're not any good at it because this, while it's just a big box, has a lot of moving parts, has a lot of depth of meaning, and all of those things kind of have to coalesce together to create a singular object. Otherwise, the effort was moot. So... It was a challenge, but it was a challenge that I can look back on with gratitude. And I hope the client feels the same way. And I'm excited to get this to them and get feedback from them. But for now, it's time to move on to the next thing. So friends, as always, go make a thing, go take some risks, go challenge yourselves. Don't be afraid to fail. And as always, till next week. This one calls for a little celebration. Till next week.